August 3rd to 8th at Gallery Espace, Christine Lalonde and Chard Chenier are displaying stamps and paintings and drawings. A vernissage will be held on August 6th. Everyone is invited. With us today, we have Chard Chenier. Hi, Chard, and welcome to the show. Great to be here. Thanks. First, please introduce yourself and tell us how you came to be an artist. Well, my name is Chard Chenier. I became an artist, I think, I combusted in front of a Van Gogh painting when I was 13, 14 years old. I was so blown away by the joy and the ecstasy of, of his paintings. When I was a young watercolorist in, in St. Boniface, Manitoba. So that's really, that started the, the flame of desire to paint. And I knew right then and there, that's what I wanted to do. He had quite an impact on me, Van Gogh. I'd seen uh, also works by Katie Kolowitz, which had a huge impact on me as well. So that's how I become an artist, actually, is having been exposed to something that has a great heart like he did. You can see it when you travel around the world. His work is appreciated everywhere. So that's how I started being an artist. How did you become involved with Christine Lalonde? Christine Lalonde is uh, the, the wife of a friend. I saw her work and I thought there was a real connection in terms of she was creating prints and drawings and photographs that were very serene, very beautiful. And a lot of my work is also trying to put out something positive into the world. So I think we had uh, we were sharing a common ground in terms of our values, our visual values, what we were contributing. Her approach is very different from mine, but it's fundamentally beautiful, peaceful, inspired by nature, by human relationships as well. So it was just a natural connection, really. It was just seems spontaneously compatible for me. What can our listeners expect of your current gallery display with Christine Lalonde? Well, I think what you're going to see is a, an interesting combination. Her work is m most of the time a bit smaller than mine and more carefully perhaps crafted in terms of prints. But they are, there are still lifes and landscapes and flowers. And my work is sort of more uh, influenced by, by my inner world rather than the outer world. So you'll see mostly uh, my abstract in and figurative pieces sort of intermingled. So it's a very different visual experience whoever goes to see our show together, you know. I think there's a lot of love and care that goes into creating the work. So it's I, as different as we are, we have similar aesthetic values. You know. What Sorry inspired you to do some of your pieces of artwork? Oh, usually, usually anything that I feel is is making me a better human being somehow. I will go through different types of struggle, but I'll try to work through that to develop my character. And what I learned from that is, you know, gets communicated onto the canvas. This happens spontaneously. Some paintings are inspired by dreams. Um, where I, I study my dreams carefully because I feel they're a form of guidance to understand how I'm really feeling about things. So it usually gets worked out that way. That's what gets the work going. If there's something mysterious and evocative and out of the ordinary, and I'm forcing myself to grow, not repeating myself, that, that inspires me too. I don't want to just do the same thing over and over again. I want to discover new worlds through the painting and the drawing. How do you like to use color in your art? I work a lot with color because I have a very deep love of it, partly because I grew up in St. Boniface, Manitoba with the Roman Catholic costumes and the vibrant colors the priests wore. The glorious sunsets over the prairie sun sunset were just stunning, you know, in terms of color intensity. And I used to go and wander and stand on a bridge and watch the sunsets over the Red River and see the color amplified because it was mirrored. So I had a very deep, spontaneous love of color, and it made me feel alive. So I listen to a lot of music that makes me feel alive. Anything that inspires me to, to communicate something authentic, something sincere, 
that'll get me going in terms of what I'm doing. And I'm just having fun as well. I'm just enjoying myself, playing with colors. Now, you mentioned that this gallery was going to be influencing your next project, which is the Blue Sparrow Sessions. Now, you're going to be performing at the Vernissage pieces from the Blue Sparrow Sessions. Can we play some of that music today or will we have to play some earlier music for you? Well, you, you can explain. Well, I think what you, sh we, you can expect is a kind of some new material that I've worked on that you don't have, that you can't play there. But, you know, if you play at one of the blues cuts, that's what I'm going to do in part. There's going to be some of the more standard blues material. Started off when I was a teenager playing the early blues, Delta blues, acoustic, and then I also moved on to Chicago blues over many years. And so I'm probably going to be doing it partially acoustic, but also electric Chicago style to add some panache to the performance. It's at three o'clock on August 6th. If you love the blues, come down. Well, we can't play anything from the Blue Sparrow sessions until that date. But That's we right. can play something from last year's album, Blue Harp. This is Mystery Electric Blues on the New Spins Library. <laughs> Thank you. 
how does blues music influence your art? I play the harmonica mainly, and it's it, the harmonica is actually the human voice. It's expressing something from deep inside. And the, the, the drawing and the painting, uh, that's also coming from within to without, you know? So the blues not, aren't necessarily always sad blues. And the drawing and the painting isn't necessarily sad just because I'm voicing something very uh, emotional internally, you know? So they're very similar. They're, they're expressing me working things through in my life from what I see around me and what I'm feeling inside. So they're actually the same thing in an odd sort of way. They also, there's a synergy between the two. They inspire each other. And when I'm playing music, I'll get new colors going through my imagination. When I'm painting, I'll be either listening to music or imagining music while I'm doing it. Uh, they just, they just, I, I'm, I, it's a part of me. Like it's, I'm both art and music. It's just the way I am. I How really, does this Bernie Sage fit into recording new tracks for the Blue Sparrow sessions? Well, it's also to raise the funds to finish doing the album and to buy new art equipment and to, to keep contributing something to the community, uh, you know, and, and it's been very hard during COVID times to keep that going. It's very challenging. So it's kind of like a leap of faith to do a show and hope people can come around and aren't afraid to come out. Fortunately, you know, the COVID numbers are not as bad as they could be. So I'm likely to think people will come to the Gallery Espace, you know. How did I'm you like working with Christine Lalonde during this gallery session? Actually, it was very interesting because it's a very much of a, a non-verbal relationship. Both of us are working in the field beyond language. So it's just a feeling we have, you know, she will show me her work and she'll come and see mine. And then, you know, there's a sort of an understanding that we're both working towards the same thing, something beautiful and that has some kind of truth about it. And that's sincere and authentic. I tend to push more of a spiritual slant on what I do. I think other than that, I think it's a lot of it is just understanding we're both on the same wavelength, aesthetically and, and love of truth and beauty. So it's not the more complicated than that, really. If our listeners want more information or to buy event tickets or, in fact, to buy your art, where should they go? Well, they can go to chardart.com and they can contact me through there and look at the work. They can listen to the music that's on my website as well. So there's drawings, there's paintings, there's music, there's the story of my life. The exhibits that I've had since 1971. I've been exhibiting since 1971. You know, I started exhibiting in Vancouver then, and it's been a good 50 years of exhibitions. So always moving on, moving forward. Well, thank you for your interview today. Thank you very much, Sheila. It was a real pleasure. I look forward to meeting you in person at the Bentley Sash. <laughs> I look forward to that. You've been listening to Char Chenye speaking about his upcoming vernissage. I am your host, Sheila Ferrando. <laughs> <laughs>